and every one of you making Georgia hillbillies would have done, given the same opportunity that I had. You see, people, this is a new generation. This is a generation of selfishness. And I am the leader of the new generation. Doing things the right way in today's society gets you absolutely nothing. It gets you nowhere. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And last week, I ate James Storm for lunch. And that stupid, sorry, son of a didn't see it coming, but that's not my fault. That's on you, James. You see, I came to the realization at Bound for Glory that after 13 years, that opportunities that I had at Bound for Glory and opportunities that I had last week only come along so often. So I made the best of my opportunity against my former tag team partner. And today, James Storm, your hero, is somewhere in a hole in the wall, drowning his sorrows, while I am the new world heavyweight champion. Oh, Bobby, hey, hey, where are you going? Who'd ever thunk it, Bobby? Who'd ever thought that you'd take the shortcut that you, you took last week? You're talking about, you think this is the selfish generation. You gotta look out for yourself. Well, tonight, I prefer to take the high road and prefer others, and starting with preferring Macon, Georgia. I am going to prefer James Storm, because tonight, there will be a world title rematch. Oh yeah, there will. You're gonna have to rematch against James Storm, and like your ex-partner would tell you, sorry! If you smell now, what The Rock is cooking! WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Tell me, he didn't just say that. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, holy yeah. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. It doesn't matter what your name is. Really? Yeah. Welcome to Turning Point Weekend here on Pro Wrestling Weekly, 1490 WBCB. Ferran Derry here with you. Another edition of Pro Wrestling Weekly, an abbreviated edition. We are here with you until 1245. Then we've got high school football action for you. And, of course, during this abbreviated show, I also have... Well, I had a few minutes to uh, speak a little while ago with WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. And we'll have that interview for you in this particular show. Of course, as you heard in the opening clip there, the go-home show for Turning Point, which is tomorrow night. Well, we got a bit of a rematch. And Robert Roode, well, later that night, he beat James Storm uh, to retain the TNA title. And it looks like we may see that again, depending on what happens with uh, AJ Styles. At the moment, Styles is uh, set to challenge Roode for the World Heavyweight uh, Championship, the, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. But... Uh, Styles dealing with a little bit of an injury that uh, that occurred on the road, and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that in the news and notes segment. We already have a couple on the line, so let's go ahead and get right to them. Let's not make them wait any longer. Let's kick it off with Tom. Tom, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Hello, Tom. Oh, Tom's. Uh, Tom. Tom doesn't. Uh, wait, which? Uh, yeah, which? Which? Okay, let's go ahead and try the other one. Let's get Joseph up here. Joseph, welcome to Pro Wrestling Week. Hello. Hello. Ron? Yes. This is Tom. Oh, Tom. Oh, I guess we uh, guess we got the lines crossed up. Okay, Tom, go uh, ahead. Well, I kept saying hello. And Sorry about anyway. that. That... that... Yeah, that's all right. That's um, that was that, that was Wild Bill. Uh, I guess he I guess he had hit uh, one of the I guess he hit line uh, line two instead of line three by accident. Sorry about that, Tom. Anyway, what's on your mind? 
Well, just wondering uh, what you thought of the former Glamazon China doing an adult video. Well, uh, it's certainly... Uh Certainly interesting. I know. Uh, I, I know when it when it first broke, uh, I talked a little bit about it. I mean, obviously, she's uh, trying to get herself a little bit of publicity one way or another. I mean, the the recent term with that is she's been sending letters and and making an open plea for uh, for Vince McMahon to bring her back into the WWE. Uh, I mean, I, I guess everybody's got to make a living in uh, in some fashion. I mean. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily be my personal viewing. Uh, I'll, I'll put it that way, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I didn't... Uh... That's her way? Huh? So that's her way of trying to get back in the WWE? Well, I, I think, I mean, what really has she done since the, since, you know, since she was in the WWE, gosh, we're going back 10 years now. I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, she had that one uh, adult video, uh, One Night in China, along with, uh, with Sean Waltman, who you might remember as X-Pac. Uh, she was on the Surreal Life, uh, that VH1 real- Celeb Reality series. But other than that, you haven't really heard a whole lot from her. And I guess, uh, you know, whatever resources she had while she was, uh, you know, while she, had, while she had earned initially from the late 90s in the WWE probably dried up and... Between that and the adult videos, I think she's now just uh, she's trying to do whatever she can to get back into the limelight. But I don't think doing an adult video will get her back in the WWE because I think they're going for a PG-13 type of uh, audience. Exactly, and that's uh, that, that's why even though she's been sending letters, she hasn't exactly gotten any responses back. So it's it's kind of been one way communication as far as uh, China trying to get back in, but it doesn't. It looks like if the uh, the WWE has been listening, they certainly haven't been responding. So you're absolutely right about that, Tom. Well, if they were doing a TV 14 like they did in the in the old days. Then I would think that she'd be able to get back, but not doing an adult video like she did. Well, perfect example of how things have definitely changed in the last 10 years. Uh, This past Monday on Raw, there was a revealing of uh, Kelly Kelly on the cover of Maxim. If this was WWE 10 years ago, that would have easily been the cover of Playboy magazine. So obviously they've kind of scaled it back a little bit. You know, something clothed as opposed to not clothed. So, I mean, you're, you're kind of seeing that across the board. Okay. I'm just wondering why she would do that kind of video if she tried to get back in her graces of Vince McMahon when he's doing a totally different opposite type of show nowadays. Unless they're going to start doing it, going back to the old aggressive days. Well, I, I think I don't think that they're going to go away from the, the kids market as much as they have. I mean, they may kind of tiptoe to that line, but they definitely won't cross it. Uh, as yet, that probably, and maybe I can't speak for China necessarily, but that could just be a matter of poor timing. Like, she probably did the video and then thought, hmm, maybe I can get back with Vince, but not realizing, well, this video probably isn't going to help me anymore, so let me let me try to find other ways to show that, all right, in spite of doing this video, I've changed my ways, but I have a feeling WWE isn't buying it even a little bit. Okay, well, I see you got a previous show, so I'll let you go. All right, thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. All righty. Let's, uh, okay, now let's, now we got it back on here. Let's go it over to Joseph, who's been waiting patiently. Uh, thank you so much, Joseph, for hanging on. You're on Pro Wrestling Weekly. All right. Yeah. I'm doing um, all right. What's on your I'll, mind? I'll, I'll just call because, you know, like, like, what do you think, what do you think about Candy Candy's momentum, you know, because, you know, she used to be sorry, you know, she used to lose, but, you know, she gained a lot of momentum, and, you know, she she's a good fighter now, you know? Uh, Kelly Kelly's definitely uh, definitely come a long way from the uh, extreme ex- expose group from uh, gosh we're going back about five years now it's amazing how uh, how time has uh, definitely flown I don't know the the divas division in general is uh, is kind of looking for some focus it had it when Karma came in but uh, ever since she uh, to let you know ever since she took a, a I guess maternity leave, for lack of a, a better term, uh, that there hasn't really been a focus. First, the focus went to 
Beth Phoenix and Natalia, and since then, that's kind of cooled off a little bit, and then there's been a little bit of a focus on Kelly Kelly. That's kind of cooled off. I mean, now they're hyping up Kelly Kelly again because of this Maxim Magazine cover. Now, it's hard to see, you know, where things are going to go with Kelly Kelly and Beth Phoenix and Natalia. More than likely, we'll see a, a matchup set up this week that will uh, that will happen at Survivor Series, whether it's going to be a one-on-one or a tag team of some sort. But, uh, yeah, I mean... Well, well, I think that, you know, I think that Kelly Kelly and Eden, they're going to get momentum now. And just Eden, she's a very good fighter, you know. Like, she never backs down from the fight. And, you know, she, she you know, she fights, she fights in the Grammys on, and it's, you know how she's kind of strong, and, you know, she went out there and fought fight her, and, you know, she has a lot of momentum. You know, like Kelly Kelly, so they'll make, like, a good thing, you know. Yeah, she's definitely scrappy. I mean, when it comes to strength, it's kind of hard for her to outdo somebody like Beth Phoenix. And uh, in terms of experience, I mean, Natalia, I mean, she's the the daughter of Jim the Anvil Neidhart, uh, an accomplished wrestler, former multiple-time tag team champion. But uh, uh, despite those, you know, those lack of attributes, as I said, she's scrappy and uh, certainly, uh, she's certainly holding her own and hopefully will... uh, see more great things for her. Uh, thanks for the call, Joseph. We're going to move on because uh, time is A, moving quickly, and B, still got to get that interview in. So we're actually, uh, Bill, we're going to go ahead and go to that now. We'll uh, we'll go to that track on the disc. Uh, this comes to us from a couple of months ago. Uh, at least it feels like a couple of months ago. Maybe about six, seven weeks ago. Uh, I was at Cinemania, of course, uh, hosted over there by uh, George's Cards and Collectibles. And uh, they were gracious enough to uh, allow me a couple of minutes with WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas, and I uh, wanted to bring that to you here. Yep, track two. It's uh, good to go there. Uh, here is the Hall of Famer Tony Atlas from 1490 WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. We are here at Cinemania with the Hall of Famer, the legend Tony Atlas. Tony, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It feel good being here. Uh, a couple of quick questions. I mean, obviously you've had a, a very storied career. Uh, do you have a particular favorite match that you were in, anything of that nature? Well, all of my matches was uh, about the same. You know, it was just such an enjoyment to be involved in the world of professional wrestling. I was able to travel the whole world. I was able to meet a lot of great people and uh, wrestle against a lot of great athletes. So, it, it, you know, it's hard to, to put anything above anything else. It was all wonderful. Talk a little bit about your uh, your, your latest run in the uh, WWE with the Abe Washington show. What, 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 what was that experience like? Well, my best experience was, uh, I, I love the Abraham Washington show, but my best experience was manager who is now the current W, the, the current world heavyweight champion Mark Henry. And traveling up and down the road where Mark Henry was absolutely fantastic. You know, I'm a pretty strong guy myself, but you know, being around Mark Henry, nobody is strong. I see Mark Henry push buses, being cast iron, frying pan, bench press over seven, eight hundred pounds in the gym. I mean, the, he, he was the most uh, tremendous uh, uh, athletes that, that I ever met in my life, and it, it was a, it was a privilege for me to get to know the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, and also Abraham Washington, who, who is a very ingenious young man. So my last experience with the WWE was, was just like all the other, absolutely fabulous. Wow, I can imagine uh, yeah, giving give, whatever kind of advice you gave. It certainly worked. Is now he's on a, a completely different track. Track, uh, and obviously now on top of things in the WWE. I see you have a, a book over here, uh, uh, Too Much Too yeah, Soon. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, uh, this is my autobiography, Tony Atlas, Too Much Too Soon. And uh, what it does is uh, 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 tells my whole story from my childhood. It starts with, uh, it shows all my accomplishments, the uh, titles that I have won. Uh, it talks about my childhood. Talks about my mom. Goes all the way up to um, you know my whole career as a pro wrestler. George Scott, who is the guy that found and developed me. I was also trained by Larry Scott. I mean, uh, uh, Larry Sharp, a uh, uh, monster factor uh, here in Philly. And uh, it was just an absolutely, absolutely great story. Talk about my bodybuilding career all the way up to the present time. I uh, talk about the death of Bruiser Brody and, and how he was uh, murdered in, in uh, Puerto Rico. I was a witness to the murder, and uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't make the trial because none of us knew 
about it, but it was one of the worst things that I've ever seen since I've been in this uh, business. We're watching Bruiser Brody get stabbed to death in a dressing room in Puerto Rico. So it's a horrendous story. So the people that want to get my book, they can go to crowbarpress.com. That's uh, crowbarpress.com, www.crowbarpress.com. And they can order the book for uh, 20 bucks and uh, read about my career and also uh, Bruiser Brody and a lot of other uh, people. It talks about Muhammad Ali and my honest Swans nigga and a whole lot of other people that I have uh been affiliated with uh, in the wrestling business. Wow, certainly an amazing story. Atlas, too much, too soon. Of course, you can get that at www.crowbarpress.com. And uh, one last quick question. Uh, obviously, uh, you and Mark Henry, you both shared that uh, body, well, bodybuilding, weightlifting career as well as a wrestling career. Uh, did you prefer one over the other? Which, which do you prefer? Uh, well, bodybuilding is good because it builds your body, keeps you in real good shape, but also like being strong. So I always like to do a crossbreed of powerlifting and bodybuilding uh, cabal because I felt that one without the other is, is no good. I see a lot of strong guys, but they don't have the physique to go with. I see a lot of guys with physique. They don't have the strength. So in my training, in the training I put Mark Hendry through when I was his trainer, is, is for he to have both the physique. And if you notice that when you look at Mark Hendry, you know, he's shaping up real good. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Hall of Famer, legend Tony Atlas. Uh, thank you so much for your time here at uh, Cinemania 7. Thank you, sir. A few great minutes with Tony Atlas, the Hall of Famer. Some interesting uh, answers there, uh, I thought he'd talk a little bit more about Abe Washington, but he went. Uh, I mean, he went to t his managerial time with Mark Henry, and uh, some interesting stories there: bending uh, cast iron pans in uh, in half and uh, pushing buses. I mean, obviously, I mean, talk about one strength trainer to another. Obviously, Mark Henry dominant at this point, taking him 15 years to get there. Great stuff, and I uh, certainly want to thank the folks over at George's Cards and Collectibles for helping get that together, especially Doug over there at uh, George's Cards and Collectibles. Anyway, we're going to take care of a little bit of business. When we come back, we've got Ed going to take a look at the local scene. We've got room for you as well, 215-949-3232 or toll-free at 888-922-2149. Those are the ways to get to us via the phone. If you're a little shy talking onto the phone, no problem. Check us out on Facebook at WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. Like the Facebook fan page. Put your contributions up on the wall. We'll go ahead and read it in the Facebook feedback. And, of course, we've also got archives of the show now up on YouTube. Just type in uh, the search box there, WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly, and you can get archives. I've got the last uh, three weeks shows up on YouTube. And uh, I'm going to go back... Not sure when, but I'll go back and get some of the other interviews that I've had over the course of the last two and a half years that the uh, that this incarnation of the show has been on the air. Try to get some of those in case you'd missed them. And also, I've got a new blog up on completelydamaged.com. Yeah, I know I've been slacking a little bit, but uh, it, it's all about how raw is Twitter. You can uh, you can definitely look into that. It, it talks a little bit about that. It even gets a Sandusky jab in there, which... Uh, I'm not the only one who has uh, some Sandusky jabs. I'll look into the tweets a little bit later on that. We've also got news and notes coming up as well. A whole lot to do, only about 20 minutes to do it here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com.